Oh, yeah. How are you, folks? Wednesday. Welcome to the show. Treat it just like a radio show. 833-599-NICK. 833-599-6425. At the bottom of this hour, 630 East, and the great Bo Deedle will be calling in. And uh, if, you, if you don't know Bo, you probably do know him from movie roles and, and uh, well, the Soprano, uh, the Sopranos, the Goodfellas, one of the most iconic lines. Uh, you know him. From- don't you move, you motherfucker. I'll blow your brains out. That's Bo Deedle. And that's a good way of describing his appearances on TV, whether it's Fox News or anywhere else. A meat and potatoes guy, police detective, NYPD for years, and just a, uh, a straight up good cop he's had movies made about him and can't wait to talk to him interesting dude <clears throat> excuse me uh real quick dates tomorrow i will be on live i don't know if it's live or not i can't figure out crowd to schedule i can't he guy's a master of, of of marketing and i can't find out i'll be taping his show uh in the afternoon outside of dallas and uh that night Tomorrow night, I'll be at the Texas Theater in Dallas, Texas. So check in. Crowder is a, uh, he makes waves. He's got big balls, and uh, he's an interesting, smart dude. Saturday, October 27th, at Lucy's in Pleasantville, New York. November 2nd and 3rd, Governor's in Levittown, Long Island, New York. Tuesday, November 6th, the Fat Black Pussycat in New York City. Friday, November 9th and the 10th, Comics, Mohegan Sun, Uncasville, Connecticut. Friday, November 30th, Saturday, December 1st, the Corner Comedy Club, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Love Canadian audiences. Uh, They're very loyal. I could have run for mayor in Montreal when I was hosting the Nasty Show up there. Uh, And then Monday, December 31st, which is New Year's Eve, bringing 2019, I'll be at the very beautiful Tarrytown Music Hall right down the street uh, from here. And uh, you don't want to miss that one. Uh, I don't work much on New Year's Eve because clubs don't know how to do it. But this is a theater. They know how to do it. And but I, I've done it in November. I've done it in the summer. I've done it in the fall. And this ought to be a real uh, humdinger. So uh, go to nickdip.com for all your ticket information, obviously. What do I got here? Oh, a letter from uh, Caremount Medical. Dear Mr. DiPaolo, I am pleased to report uh, that uh, your echogram... Looked good. The heart is pumping vigor- vigorously. The heart valves are normal. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. And uh, there it is. Cigarettes and all. Oh, yeah. Pumping like a fucking 18-year-old on his first date. It would be kind of late for a date on a... But, uh, all right, with a hot chick with big fucking titties. You hear that? Yes. You are correct, sir. So I don't know what, what that was all about. You know, they did an EKG. They did a couple of them. Oh, it looks different. You're flatlining. Well, whatever. The girl stuck the, the uh, electrodes in my forehead. They might have something to do with it. I'm a little empty up there. So uh, anyways, can't wait to, uh, can't wait to uh, get back on the treadmill. Uh, anyways, uh, what do we got going on today? Uh, I told you I'm going to Dallas tomorrow. Hey, one of you, uh, one of you twinks want to make an extra 100 They'll be giving me a ride to LaGuardia early in the morning and picking me up on Sunday. It's an extra hundred. <laughs> sure. Nah, I'm out. <laughs> Just the way I thought it was going to go. Hey, don't be afraid to use that uh, camera when I'm looking your way. There you go. Now I'm directing. Uh, Jason, you all right with that? Yeah, yeah sure, that's fine. You picking me up around 7 tomorrow? Right at 7, I mean. Tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, that's doable. Tomorrow, yes. Wait, what time would I be getting back? Back from what? Yeah. Never mind. I should be good. Yeah. Why? What do you got at 9 in the morning? What do you got to do? Paper out? Yes. All right. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's, it could be a, but it's an extra 100. You know, that's uh, two-thirds that I'm paying you. What? That's right. Slave, slave labor. <laughs> I got these guys making my pillows. Rip-offs. Take a bunch of my wife's tampons and uh, really about a week's worth and make a four thousand pillows. Oh, that was not right, Nick. That was it's nasty. Eight three three five nine nine six four two five. Eight three three five nine nine six four. 
two five. Quick uh, update on the Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, focus, autistic one. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, update on the story we did. A Dunkin' Donuts employee was fired after he was filmed pouring a pitcher of water on a homeless man who appeared to be sleeping uh, in a store in Syria. We covered this. Yeah, show the video again for this uh, this fucking asshole. You want to sleep? No, you not want to sleep. How many times do I got to tell you to stop sleeping in here, man? Yeah. You hear all day, you have enough time, man. How many times have dealt customers and the people gonna tell you to stop sleeping in here? No, it was no accident, bro. You know I'm not playing with you. Oh, I ain't gonna call the cops you like I said. You're gonna get out of here. I like the painting in the background. It's like from Jimmy Walker's Good Times, apparently. Uh, you saw that. You could see Thelma in the background. Uh, but, you know, when we reported on yesterday, he hadn't been fired, he had been uh, suspended, but they had the balls to can him, thank you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We should be doing jazz hands at that point. Uh, anyways, a guy named Sam Brazil, 23-year-old guy, a diesel mechanic in uh, Syracuse, said he saved a copy of the video after seeing it elsewhere on Facebook. By Tuesday afternoon, his post had been viewed more than 3 million times, as opposed to the 8 million when the black guys at Starbucks were loitering and violating uh, the store's rules. But eight million on that one, so it just goes to show you how PC and fucked up this country is. Uh, in an interview with Syracuse Post Standard, Mr. Dufresne, that's the guy, the poor white homeless guy who was doused, said he had entered Dunkin' Donuts to charge his phone so he could call his mother. He also said he was not asleep when the video was filmed, but was briefly resting his head. The video is the latest social media post that shows employees acting improperly at a coffee chain. In June, an employee at Dunkin' Donuts in Cincinnati was fired after writing a disparaging note on a homeless woman's cup. What do you get against homeless people? Fucking Dunkin' Donuts. They were they were, they usually post it outside though. <laughs> and of course, the uh, April video of Starbucks when the two uh, black fellas who were loitering that got viewed eight million times. Um, but the guy the guy got fucking canned. So you're fired. 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 According You're fired. to a statement You're fired. from You're fired. You're fired. Kimberly Wolak, the chief operating officer of the Wolak Group, which owns and operates that Dunkin' Donuts, other employees were also let go, but none of the workers were identified. Why not? Why not? Put a picture of them. Let me ask you this. I hate to go back to these double standards that are so obvious, but if that was a black homeless guy and two white guys dumped ice on him and were joking about it, uh... You think you would have identified them in the paper? Of course you would have. That's a that's a way of shaming them. It's part of the punishment. Make their make their put their faces in the newspaper. God damn it. Anyways, uh, Dufresne, that's the homeless guy, told the paper he struggles with mental illness as most of us do. That go to Dunkin' Donuts. I'll have eleven fucking crellas and give me a fucking honey dip and a couple of Boston creams. You're going to eat all those, sir? No, I'm going to fuck them. I mean, there's a lot of mental illness in donut shops. It'll be, yeah, thank you. Fucking one of the twinks, Ryan, just did this. I'm 56. I know what fucking is. Maybe I can teach you after. What? What kind of talk is that on the show? Anyways, uh, he told the paper he lives outside. He lives outside because he prefers it. As Ronald Reagan said, some of the... Uh, some of the homeless, well, they choose to be that way. His mother said she had unsuccessfully tried to get him to stay with her in another town. Probably Poughkeepsie. He said, fuck that, I'll live under a bench. <laughs> it's funny, from the New York area. Well, maybe Detroit. After uploading the video, Mr. Brazil also launched a crowdfunding campaign. How about this guy? This is a guy making a difference. I usually hate people who make a difference. This guy's actually making a difference. This uh, the guy who, who you know re-released the video, uh, launched a crowdfunding campaign for the mentally ill Mr. Dufresne, and as of Tuesday afternoon, raised at least thirteen grand, which he said he planned to give to Mr. Dufresne. He says he planned. He didn't say he was gonna. You know, I plan to donate to a PBS a lot of the times too. I want that fucking Rolling Stones tote bag, and I, 
pledge $3,000, and then I don't send it in, and I look for the bag. That's the American way. 833-599-6425. But good for Dunkin' Donuts and Miss Wolak for having some balls, as we say here in New York. Let's get on to the story. What else? What else? Christine Blasey Ford. I just hate her fucking name. I don't hate her. I don't doubt something happened to her, but I like her. I again I'll say it, I think it had to do with an uncle and a fucking pool cue and six miller lights. Nick, where do you get that? I, I I don't know. But anyways, President Trump, my favorite president, and I'm not saying that sarcastically, at a rally yesterday, last night, Mississippi mocked Christine Blasey Ford. Uh we actually have uh some of the video of, of President Trump. I mean, this is how he talks to everybody and anybody, okay? So I don't want to hear he's picking on women, wah, wah, wah. This is how he talks to fucking minorities, gay people, straight white men. He's just a bull in a china shop. Here's him mocking Christine Ford. Shouldn't happen to him. What he's going through, 36 years ago, this happened. I had one beer, right? I had one beer. One beer. Well, do you think it was, nope, it was one beer. Oh, I had a beer. How did you get home? I don't remember. I How'd don't you get there? I don't remember. I don't Where recall. is the place? I don't remember. How many years ago was it? I don't know. I don't know. Wow, sounds like some people know. are on cabin on side. I don't know. What neighborhood was it in? I don't know. Where's the house? I don't know. Upstairs, downstairs. Where was it? I don't know. But I had one beer. That's the only thing I remember. Hmm. Oh, my God, the feminists must have their giant bushes and a real fucking huff, huh? Uh, but here's my only problem with that, because he, he said this many times after Miss Miss Ford, Dr. Ford, gave her testimony. She's very compelling, very compelling. So that kind of contradicts what he was saying last night. Uh, maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he has some inside info into the supplementary investigation that the FBI, the FBI is doing, and maybe he knows they haven't found anything further. Maybe that's why. Or he gets cocky, like all politicians do, in front of their own constituency. We do it. We do it. Comedians do it. You, you know, there's a crowd there to see. You think you can get away with everything. And you say shit, and then you, you know, the club calls you and goes, you, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't light the curtains on fire and uh, kick a cat in the stomach, especially if it's pregnant. But, but my fans loved it. But you get all excited or whatnot. But he did say she was really compelling, and, and now he's mocking her. So I'm guessing he might have some inside scoop. As far as I know, uh, nothing new has been overturned. There's been a few things overturned that might hurt her. I'll get to that in a goddamn second. Um, anyways, three other people that Ford had named uh, as attendees at that party said they have no memory of the party including a lifelong friend of Mrs. Ford's who said she has never met Kavanaugh, though she believes Ford's accusations. Trump said a man's life is in tatters. His wife is shattered. They destroy people, he added, presumably referring to the Democrats. No shit. Who have led the opposition to Kavanaugh. They want to destroy people. They These are really evil, evil people. I, I got to believe it. I, you know, we, We've discussed this ad nauseum and what it's just a time delay tactic they're trying to stretch this thing out the minute trump agreed to the you know supplementary investigation the next day they were fucking whining it's not enough time (laughs) we're moving the goalposts and uh they're fucking horrible people just watch three minutes of pelosi whether it's at a kid's birthday party or speaking in front of a democrat just just fucking no compass no moral compass you got that guy ellison I can never remember his first name. Let's call him Malcolm X Ellison, uh, one of the first congressmen to put his hand on a Koran when he was sworn in in Minneapolis. They have all kinds of evidence on that fucking angry black dude who dragged his girlfriend off the bed by her feet, Miss Monahan. They have text messages. They have empirical evidence. None of the Democrats are digging into that. So you're all full of fucking shit. You play dirty. I wish God damn Mitch McConnell would pass away in his sleep tonight so we could get somebody young in there who's just as hateful as the Democrats. You got to fight fire with fire. That's what I say. Guilty unpro- until proven innocent. That's a very dangerous. That's very dangerous. <laughs> that's a very dangerous for our country. All of a sudden, I'm talking Italian. That's what Trump said. He says, I have it myself all the time, but for me, it's like part of the job description. Let it happen to me. It shouldn't happen to him. 
He also went after the credibility of Julie Swetnick's allegation against Kavanaugh. You remember who Julie Swetnick is? She was saying uh, all kinds of stuff about Kavanaugh and Mark Judge trying to get girls drunk and then organizing rape parties and, and so forth. He, he specifically, Trump mentioned an interview that uh, Swetnick did with NBC News' Kate Snow on Monday in which her comments raised new questions about her allegation that Kavanaugh drugged girls. Here's the video from NBC. They say she saw either man spike it. Did you see Brett Kavanaugh, you know, spiking the punch, putting green well, alcohol I, in the I punch? Saw, I saw him giving red solo cups to quite a few girls Guilty. during that time frame. And there Guilty. was green punch at those parties. And I would not take one of those glasses from Mark Kavanaugh, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, excuse me. It wasn't big I enough. I saw him around the punch, I won't say bowls, or the punch containers. I don't know what he did, but I saw him buy them, yes. In her declaration, Swetnick also wrote, All I right, also... I told you to cut it there. Come on, guys. A liar, liar, whore, liar, whore, and you know it. Oh, he was around the punch bowls. He was handing out red cups, so he's got to be guilty. Not to mention yesterday or the day before. They, we have evidence that uh, Kavanaugh was in a bar fight in New Haven, Connecticut. Actually threw ice at somebody. So let's lock this guy up. He's obviously a detriment to society. This is the woman that went to 10 so-called parties where gang rapes took place and kept going back until it happened to her. So uh, you guys can connect the dots on that one. But he was handing out red cups. I saw him looking at the punch. He was around the punch bowl. My aching stem, Julie. Sweat dick. I mean, for the love of Christ. Snow, uh, that's the woman who went... Uh, interviewed her, said that NBC attempted to contact four people. Swetnick said could corroborate her contention that gang rapes were prevalent at house parties in the area in the 1980s. According to NBC, two did not respond of the four. One was deceased, and one said he had no memory of Swetnick. Not to mention her boyfriend said that she threatened his family and his kids, his, her ex-boyfriend. Employers said she was fucking cuckoo. And um, yet NBC still chooses to put her on there. So, But it's so bad that NBC had to admit she might have been full of shit. What do you think of that? I'll tell you what I think of that. You hear that? It's a healthy beating heart with a bunch of Marlboro light smoke mixed in with the blood, and it uh, feels good. Let's go to our buddy uh, Kevin uh, in uh, Chicago, the Windy City. Hey, Kev, what's going on? Your thoughts on the whole Kavanaugh fucking circus? Yeah, I just been following it. I feel like the, at the um, Jewish, the Jews are really trying to keep this guy out of power. <laughs> I feel like uh, you can see the. What do you mean? You got what Blumenthal, you... you got Feinstein. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh my! Cat, God. Don't play this game. I know your buddy with Crowder. I know I'm your buddy with hold... Crowder, big time Zionist. Uh, hold on, stupid! I'm not buddies with Crowder. I've, I've inter been interviewed on his show two or three times. Fucking, I've I've never met, I've never met him personally. How about that? So I'm not buddies with him. But uh, what what is what is all this anti-Semitic? The Jews? There's about a hundred other Democrats that are that are involved in this who aren't Jewish. So come on, Kev, don't be nuts now. The two lawyers, the two lawyers, Bromwich and Katz. Yeah. They're um, <laughs> they're doing it for free. All right. You know why they're doing it for free? Is because they're um, because they're um, it's just. <laughs> Watch out because I'm All right, that was one theory. <laughs> it's the Jews again. I make Jewish jokes on stage, but I do it in New York in front of a bunch of Jewish people and they laugh their ass off. Um and usually involves the Bible. That's the one place well they were controlling the media back then. But um <laughs> it's, it's, it's Jewish lawyers. That's right, Chuck Schumer. Maybe he has a point. But how about all the other scumbags? How about Jeff Flake? 
Last time I checked, he wasn't circumcised, and that was about two hours ago. I ran into him at the bus stop in Albany. <laughs> what? Oh, did you hear that crackling? Why is that? Anyways, 833-599-6425. Kev, uh, I hate to throw water on that uh, that fucking theory, but that's, that's, that's out there. I mean... Who do you think runs uh, NBC where she just made herself look, look like an asshole, Sweatnik? Who runs that? It's not the Amish, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, hey, people have their theories, and they're all welcome here. We're not like Google who are going to boot you uh, get, like they did to Alex Jones or whatever because you're a consp- conspiracy nut, maybe a little anti-Semitic. But uh, that's some good. Yes, Jason. We have a super chat on YouTube. A super chat on YouTube. Do, yeah, I, Dan, do I get paid for addressing? You do, actually. <laughs> That's not a joke. I do. Go ahead. Yeah, da- Daniel Charney asks, Nikki boy, do you yeah. ever watch mainstream news? I can't stand it, so I watch internet alt news instead. I feel so isolated from normal people because of this. Yeah, no, I. I that's a great point. Uh, I don't know who watches broadcast news anymore. I, I, I've, I've, you know, I check in with them all. What's his name? Daniel. Daniel, I check in with them all, but no, I, I haven't sat through a full broadcast. Every fucking broadcast since I was, I'd say, 30, uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, all the three major news broadcasts, it would be three minutes of hard news at the top, and then our piece on women's health, you know, then 18 minutes on breast cancer, and then why white people are bad, and then they sign off. Uh, yeah, no. At least... At least, I know, because he makes a good point, because Obama, you know, was always pissing all over. We're divided because of cable news, and there's a little bit of truth to that, I guess. But he'd want it where he wanted it the way it was, where there was only three networks being watched for news, and they're all controlled by libs. So that that was his big beep. God forbid somebody like Fox News came along and opposed his Marxist horse shit. Plus, the pussy is a lot hotter on cable news. Peter Jennings, he died of uh, lung cancer. He's a Canadian. And Walter Cronkite, everybody thought was, he was like America's dad. He was supposedly the most honest man in news. And, and uh, after he retired, you read shit about interviews he's done. He was as left as, uh, you know, uh, the green monster. What? <laughs> Fellas, baseball fans? Yeah, did you watch the game last night? Oh, I did. Uh, I didn't fi- I didn't finish it. I t- I conked out right around when they brought in Kyle Hendricks. Oh, my God. Which kind of sucks. I'm a big Kyle Hendricks fan. Wow. You can really suck the life out of a conversation, Jason. I'm fan. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck if you're a fan of Hendricks. And the, it, it was a great game. Colorado, uh, you know, it, it was tremendous. They just fucking uh, went in there and uh, well, Milwaukee beat the Cubs, right? They won the division. And then as a punishment, the Cubs had to play Colorado. Very impressive. That kid, that lefty, was throwing smoke for like seven yeah, innings, he's, right? Yeah, he's really interesting because he's super funky, too, like you'd hope for a lefty to be. But yeah. he's just uh, on the play. It, his fastball up was so good. No, he was nasty. Very nasty. And you got a nice one tonight. The A's and the uh, Yankees. I'm still scared shit of the Yankees. Just as a Red Sox fan, I'd rather lose to the goddamn A's. The Yankees hit home runs like a fucking high arc, high arc uh, softball league. It's, it's frightening. But anyways... Um, Anyways, let's let's uh, move on. I can't wait for the game tonight. Baseball, playoff baseball is as good as anything. That's if you like that stuff. I mean, if you're into dancing and, and pottery, that's fine, too. I got a story at the end I probably want to. Guys are starting to wear stilettos now. So let, well, let's all put our uh, guns in our mouths, everybody from the NRA, myself, and take our own heads off and do ourselves a favor. Uh, all right, let's go to, uh, let's go, uh, oh, we're going to get an international opinion. Chris, uh, from Canada wants to talk about Blasey Ford. Chris, uh, welcome to the show. How are you? Very good, Nick. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in agreement with you. Christine Blasey Ford. It almost looks like the left picked her out of like a lineup and just said, look, something happened to you. Great. Here's, here's your, your talking points. We don't care if it's Kavanaugh or not. Just blame him, blame him, blame him. Because let's be honest, every white man has done this as far as they're concerned. Yeah, you made a great point. It's turned into race now. I showed that Jeffrey Tubin and, and a, there's a montage of people on the left on cable TV. It's all about old white men now. And, of course, Ann Coulter has to bring some logic to it. And I say that seriously. I love her. She actually said, 
white Western European males, which is most of the country when they talk about all white guys, uh, the probably the least rapey culture. <laughs> when you when you look around the planet, when you look what goes on in South America and the Middle East, and uh, I mean, who are they shitting? So you're right. It's it, it, it somehow transcended from uh, just gender in, into race. And, and uh, I don't want to bring up the rape statistics in this country that involve people of color because that would only bring some sense to the the argument. But I think you're right. They said, you got a great story. Let's use this broad. She didn't want it to come, come out in the public, and they used her like a rag and threw her away. Anything for power, Chris. Anything for power on the left in the United States. And uh, so, great point. Absolutely, though. You're 100% right in anything for power. I mean, do you think in, in the right mind anyone would bring in someone like Swartnick there? I mean, she is, she is batshit crazy. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. You could see it in her eyes when she's being interviewed. And, and the thing she's saying, well, he was in Connecticut at the time, therefore he's, he should be accused. I mean, she's out of her mind, that woman. Yeah. And yet I can't believe that the news would even allow her on. I can't believe that there isn't a possibility of a lawsuit against her for making accusations where there's absolutely nothing to support it. That, and that's a great point. That is a great point that this investigation, this supplemental investigation, should look into all these women's past. Dig as deep as you did against Kavanaugh. And they should be held accountable. Swetnick should definitely... For, for, for perjury, whatever. But it backfired on NBC. Thank you for the call, Chris. It backfired on NBC. They put her on, and then they had to go. She didn't... Even they had to admit. NBC, who carried water for Obama for eight years, and you can't get a more liberal network. Even they said this is, you know, none of her shit corroborates what she said in earlier interviews. So it sort of blew up in their face. But I love how it's turned into old oh, fucking white men need a lesson and how to treat women. Are you shitting me? Just go online and look at fucking, uh, you know, uh, whether it's Ray Rice or whatever. Look, Just look at the NFL, the police blotter, uh, every year. Uh, you know, uh, they turned it into an anti-white, anti-male. And I told you, Oprah started all this shit with her stupid show years ago. Um, Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, staying on uh, on on Blasey Ford. This is interesting, and they're going to have to dig into this a little deeper. An ex-boyfriend of uh, Christine Blasey Ford reportedly wrote a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee contradicting her testimony last Thursday on polygraphs, prompting Grassley to raise doubts about her truthfulness. Okay, you raised him. Now investigate him. The man who says he dated uh, Ford from '92 to '98 wrote in the letter that he once saw Ford help ease the nerves of a friend preparing to take a polygraph by, in quote, unquote, explaining in detail what to expect and how they work. Okay, why is that a big deal? During last Thursday's hearing, Arizona sex crimes prosecutor Rachel Mitchell, remember John Madden in a dress? feel bad for her. Uh, asked Ford if she had ever talked with anyone other than her lawyers about how to take a polygraph, a polygraph and Ford said never. She said never. And you blew it! You blew it! You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. That's gone a little too far. I wouldn't call it that. But uh, the man whose name was not released also said that during his relationship with Ford, she never mentioned Brett Kavanaugh or her experience as a victim of sexual assault, which is a little more understandable. A little more. I don't know if she'd get into details about sexual assault, but she might have brought him up. Uh, and a letter late Tuesday, Grassley asked Ford's lawyers for the polygraph results, saying the ex's claims raised specific concerns about the reliability of Ford's polygraph examination. I keep saying polygraph, polygraph. God, I dated a polygraph in high school, for Christ's sake. How can I get that wrong? Uh, about the results. Anyways, I want to see these women held accountable, okay? The law is supposed to swing both ways. But in the era of uh, hashtag me too and my snatch, uh, men are treated like, uh, you know, like dirt, in my opinion. So uh, I hope they dig into it. But yeah, Swetnick is cuckoo. Ramirez, you got the one who said that he, you know, Kavanaugh exposed himself to her. She actually touched his penis. They had a dildo at the party and stuff. They're still working on that one. But you just watch this blow up when they when the Republicans say, OK, it's over. We're going to vote on Friday or whatever. You watch the kicking and screaming and you can bet right now 
around the clock, the Dems uh, are working, trying to dig up dirt on anybody, anybody who sides with Kavanaugh in this thing. Is uh, Bo, is Bo Dietl, uh, keep an eye out for Bo. He's calling it at 6.30. So let, bang on the window if you have to to get my attention. Um, anyways, I, w- I was hoping to get to him before I get into the Michael Savage audio because he's got a, he put a theory out there that I don't know what to make of. Um, real quick, I'm going to go to Dale, but we're waiting for Bo to call in Dale, so I might have to give you the boot right in the middle of it. But um, let's go to Dale in New Jersey. What's going on, Dale? All right, Nick, real quick. Uh, thank you, brother. Yep. Um, you ever notice that last yeah, yesterday I saw, like, you know, they said the, the FBI is going to take one week, Trump one week. And then yesterday I saw reports FBI can conclude this on Wednesday. Like, okay. And then I wake up tomorrow and see the news reports. Well, Trump has $500 million from his father. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> they threw this Kavanaugh thing. And, and I'm like, really? I go, this is what you got? I'm like, this is, are you, wow. Was that? I'm like, this is going to yeah, was them in the midterms. And I, it, was that the tax the tax return story you're talking about, Dale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His father gave him some money, so it was like some legal loopholes. Nick, you notice they never said illegal. His dad loopholes. It was loopholes. Trump said this when he won the presidency right. of the debate. Right. Because they used the laws of the land. Right. It's like, what would you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and and it's like, do you really think Trump is like one step ahead? If Trump really thought Kavanaugh was guilty or this and that, he did that with a guy in Alabama. He wouldn't support him. So He's going to wait, and he's going to, they're going to get fucked in the midterms. Because, Nick, real quick, when did this happen that the Dems were going to win the House and the Senate? I'm very confused. I, just, I, I don't think that was ever going to happen. So you believe there's not going to be any blue wave or anything close to it? He's going to keep the House, and this is my prediction. He'll get, like, 56. I wish he'll get 60, 56 in the Senate, but I wouldn't be surprised because— uh, I'm going to sum this up. Do you remember when Trump won the presidency, how everyone lost their minds? They didn't realize this. No one, did everyone forget that the Democrats ran the Senate? And when Trump won, he also flipped the Senate. Oh, yeah. It was like, yeah, he's got 52 now. Yeah. No yeah. one really talked about that. Right. Like, uh, guys, I don't think you know what you're in for. No, you're he's exactly cool. right. No, you're exactly right. Everybody was wrong about it, especially in the media. Hey, good call, Dale. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate All it. Right, brother. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Joining us right now on the phone, and boy, I tell you, I admire this guy for a long time. I've seen him as a Fox News contributor, uh, a guest tonight calling in, gained publicity as an NYPD detective in the 70s and 80s, solved high-profile cases like Palm Sunday Massacre 84, most notably the rape and torture of an East Harlem nun, uh, and, and they turned that into a movie, if you guys saw it, with Harvey Keitel called The Bad Lieutenant, and um, his time in Hollywood didn't end there. He uh, starred in Scorsese's Goodfellas, and uh, obviously we all know the line. Don't you move, you motherfucker. I'll blow your brains out. And he also wrote an autobiography, uh, One Tough Cop, in 1998. He's a, a Fox News contributor, and just just one tough nut. And if in a perfect world, he would be mayor of New York City. Bo, welcome to the show. I can't, can't thank you enough for calling in. Hey, thank you so much, Nick. You know, that wasn't my movie. The Bad Lieutenant was Harvey Keitel. My movie was One Tough Cop based on a book with Stephen Baldwin, and I didn't pull my penis out like Harvey <laughs> did in that movie. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, well, okay, I'm going bl- to blame it on my producers, but that's what it said in the bio they pulled up. But I didn't, I didn't think that was about you either. I, I had never heard you connected to that movie. And I, no, and- you know, what happened was they want, you know what they wanted to do? What? They wanted to take one of the most heinous heinous crimes in New York history. Right. The, the rape of the nun where they caught, caught 27 crosses, they put brooms, they right. defecated on her. So they wanted to take the most horrible case and have this drug-using lieutenant break the case, but he was a junkie and all that. Harvey played a great thing. He had that nut, Abel Ferrara. He was the, he was the direct, he's a screwball. <laughs> and uh, they based it loosely on one tough. But the real movie was One Tough Cop with Stephen Ball. And right. They had me killing about 40 fucking, <laughs> 40 fucking people. I didn't kill anybody. But they, that's that's that movie. Yeah. Ball, let me ask you. And how long how long were you uh, on the force, uh, NYPD? I was, I came on I came on 1970, and I retired in 1985. Right. What happened was I had a bodyguard. I had a bodyguard company with the Saudi Arabian princes. Yeah. I had to travel all over the world. Yep. And the day that I ended up uh, being on the cover of every newspaper and every newsreel with the Palm Sunday massacre, 
I went to meet these uh, Abadabba dudes over at the Palace oh. Hotel. And the next <laughs> thing is, they, yeah, they go like this, Bo, you're so brave. You, uh, you come with us to La Jolla, California. We're going to have a big party. And uh, so I go out there, I fly out there. Next thing is they have a party. They invite 25 off-duty actresses for 2500 each to party up, drink Dom Perignon. Next thing is the Arabs go to me. They were Both of them are in the military. So they had jumped 100 times each. They go, boy, you're so brave. Did you ever jump out of a plane? I go, no. They go, are you afraid? I say, I ain't afraid of, I ain't afraid of nothing. So the next day I'm sitting in a DC-3. <laughs> I had a football helmet on. And the fuck, I jumped out of the plane. I had no fucking clue what I was doing. I was tumbling. I was, they go, you pull this, you pull that. I had a full shoot. It, was a, it wasn't a square shoot. And the next thing is, I didn't realize they had to do a thing called landing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. when I hit the ground at about 30 miles an hour, I broke my leg in half. The bone was taken out. My foot was facing the wrong fucking <laughs> way. And that was the end of my police career. <laughs> I wow! I had none of that, you know, and, and I scoured the internet. But uh, man, you you aren't afraid of anything. Well, you know, I don't know. So, yeah, it was it was something that I tell you the truth. When before I became a cop, I was a, a concrete laborer, and I was an iron worker on the original World Trade Center. I was really afraid of height. I was always afraid of height, but I would fight the fear when I would work as an iron worker, and I I didn't want to act like a pussy. So I used to walk the girders at the end of the day. Just trying to defeat my fear of height. Oh my and I don't god! Know, I still get fucking. In. I still get that twiddly feeling in my stomach when I'm up high. You know. Let me let me get you to weigh in here, quick, Bo. That's unbelievable, man. You aren't afraid of anything. Let me get you. I think it's scary hanging out with those Arabs and actually walking those high girders. But uh, let me get your your take on because I haven't talked to you. But uh, and I know this is a little dated, but you're such a uh, a true blue cop. Uh, I want you to weigh in on Kaepernick and the whole nailing thing and him having socks depicting cops like pigs. And and what what do you think of guys like him and people who, who back him? Well, you want to know something. It all, it's all just one cause, and I'm going to tell you something. He was my president, and I respect him as a president, but he didn't do dick. He divided this country. A guy named Obama, and he caused this division when he pre-ejaculated with his uh, news conferences before any of the information was in. And he started to divide the cops, and then this whole Black Lives Matter bullshit started. Right. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you got all these race baiters that started. No one cares about the 6,000 African Americans that were killed in Chicago in the last 10 years, which I've been talking about. It. Right. When did you see this fucking president go to Chicago? When did you ever see that, uh, my friend, Skinny Al, used to be Fat Al Sharpton, and that other Jesse Pimp Jackson, that punk, that shakedown punk? Right. When did you see them ever have a march in Chicago? No one cares about that seven-year-old little girl, Letitia, sitting on the stoop that got shot in the head. 6,000 African Americans, no one said a word. If there's a, if there's a shooting that's questionable, hey, you have millions and millions of interactions across this country every day with cops. Cops are all not bad. I just heard on the radio, five cops were shot down in the Carolinas. It just, I hope they're alive. You're they kidding. said five cops were just shot just now. Yeah. So my point is, everybody wants to, to condemn cops. It ain't an easy job. You're out there making a fraction of a second decision that they're going to be able to question you. Now they got these fucking cell phones. If they had cell phones, when I used to brass knuckles, these cocksuckers, if they had cell phones, I'd probably be in jail. Fuck them. I didn't kill anybody. So statute of limitations is over. <laughs> and I ain't running for mayor and I ain't running for nothing. Fuck them. Let me ask yeah. you. Let me let me ask you this. If, if, if you make great points about during the Obama administration, you actually saw like the 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 upper brass, uh, the people that run the city of Baltimore, telling the cops to stand down. There's a lot of that going on. And uh, what would you tell a young guy, a young Bo Deedle in his twenties, who, who wanted to become a cop today? Because cops are actually was personally. Respond- I'd like to, I'd what tell- would you tell him? I tell you, I tell you what, son. If my son wanted, my son's 23. Right. Thank God he, he's got a great job. He wanted to become a cop, I'd break his fucking arm. I'd never let him become a New York City cop. They spit at cops. They disrespect them. These poor cops are out there trying to do their job. They got no support. You got some psychopath judge overseeing what they do. You got somebody else overseeing that one. Overseeing, they look at 
A cop is out there to protect you. Right. When you have somebody coming through your back fucking window, you want that cop to come up and, and help you and save you. You know what? Respect goes both ways. Hey, something really cool that I got involved in real fast, because it has to do with what we're talking about. I got involved in this. Every magazine across America said it's called Bola. Rap. Yes, B-O-L-A I was going to bring a rap. Yes. Yes, I was going to bring that up. Tell the people, me- tell the people what that is, but Okay, so I've been involved with a lot of things. I get a call from somebody and they said, "Bo, you got to see this." I go over to New Jersey. I'm in I'm Montclair University over there, and I see something that I'm, I'm my hair, whatever hair I got left, still standing <laughs> up on my head. How unbelievable this is! It's the char- It's a, the size of a cell phone. You point it, it has a laser pointer. You pay, point it in between a person's legs or around their uh, on their chest. Right. Within a fraction of a second, I, it's unbelievable. A, uh, a thing shoots out 650 uh, feet per second and wraps a person in a fraction of a second with a fish hook, and he's got a Kevlar rope around him. He can't break it, and he's around his arms or his legs. He can't run away. This is the most remarkable police tool. So now you got a guy with a knife, and you don't have to shoot him. You, you bowler wrap the bastards, and you, then you go over there, and you handcuff them, and we will save people. Now, I'm not doing this for the cops. You know what I'm doing it for? I'm doing this for the community. I want to save some people in the fucking community. Right. So this way a cop has an option. He doesn't have to shoot the guy. Because a lot of these people that you're coming against, one out of five calls are you got mentally disturbed people. Some people who are mentally disturbed don't even know what the fuck they're doing. Right. And you know what? To shoot them, that's very callous. You got to remember, I was a cop in the 70s and the 80s. I was hospitalized 30 times. I had a fractured skull. I was shot at many times. One time, a guy shot at me 15 feet away. He pulled the trigger. He didn't know how to shoot. He didn't squeeze. He misses me with five shots, and he throws the gun down. He goes, you got me. You got me. I said, motherfucker, I got you. I beat the <laughs> shit out of him until I put him in a fucking hospital, and I locked him up for attempted murder. Yeah, that's right. I did do that. I didn't kill him. Statue of limitations is, is over. Fuck you. That's it. Hey, the thing about the bowler wraps. What would you do? Uh, what would I do? What would you do? What would you do? If a, what would you yeah. What would you do if a guy shoots at you five times and he misses it and he throws the gun down and says, you got me. Fuck you. I got you. <laughs> you got me. Like you're going to go, okay, uh, all is fair. But, you know, the bowler wrap thing, I have one concern about that invention, uh, Bo. Uh, I'm afraid go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. people are going to steal those things and use them to get girls. You see, you see a drunken girl in front of a club. You well, fucking you wrap her up. That's a that's a whole other subject. Now, <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for young men today. You, you're fucked today. I grew up in the '60s. I was banging fucking broads by the by the. Uh, I was by, what was that? Uh, you, were, your brother was banging cocktail waiters two, two at a time. time. When I grew up in the in the Adam's Apple, we had an Adam's Apple in the city. I used to bang all the students. I was hitting them on the fire escape in the back office at the heliport. I was doing two or three a night. You know, and, and like you know, they always used to go like this. Oh no, no, I don't really don't want it until you until you got the cock out, and then all of a sudden you got the cock out. And then don't stop, don't stop. I've been doing it for half an hour. I gotta stop. I ain't got no more in me. I mean, Paul, well, let me. Yeah, it's really a shame. It's a good segue into the Kavanaugh, yeah. the, the Kavanaugh thing, and, and, and how right now, um, you know, men are being not just Kavanaugh, but guys on college campuses being falsely accused, and 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 all these accusations against Kavanaugh, and all of a sudden it's become, a, oh, it's an old, you know, white guy thing, uh, rape, uh, you know, uh, can we bring a little honesty to the conversation? Um, yeah, but you don't want to know something. Yeah, I I really feel I got a really good opinion on this. So Kavanaugh drank beer like every other kid drinks in right. college. And did he throw up like every other kid? And did he maybe not remember what he did one night? Hey, we all went through that fucking sure. thing. My own son drank too much, and he was telling cops, I'll take my handcuffs off, uh, and I'll take his own. I slapped him in the face. <laughs> the next day, he never even remembered talking to these cops like that. My point is, it's like... Is like this, this chick that says that she got uh, sexually raped. First of all, she didn't say she got raped. Him. She said he put his hands over her right. mouth and tried to, to feel her up or some shit. I mean, I used to do that all the time. What, what the fuck is it? Nothing. And then all of a sudden, she's there and she's with these psychiatrists. I had a cousin who was a PhD psychiatrist. She was more fucking nuts than anybody because she had the psychiatrist. And when they lay back, 
Well, what's bothering you? Your deepest recesses of your mind. <laughs> oh, there was a party. Hey, there was this guy, Kavanaugh, who's going for the Supreme Court. Yeah, I think he was there. Let me look at my yearbook, 36 years. I can't even remember if I got laid last fucking week. <laughs> I mean, this guy, goes, this woman's going back 36 fucking years ago. Come on, give me a break now. As far as Kavanaugh goes, yeah. he's just like every other red-blooded guy. Right. And how many times you're dry-humping abroad, you're dry-humping abroad, she's going, no, no, you're grabbing a breast a little bit, she's going, no, no, she's pushing away. Next thing you go down there and grab the jelly box, she's pulling your strap out, bumping it in. I mean, at what point, at what point is it sexual harassment? Is it not sexual harassment? Is it sexual abuse or not? It's a fine fucking line. Hey, I'm going to go home and masturbate. I don't even want to go with any girls anymore. I mean, I don't know who's going to jump on me and tell me I sexually abused them. I'm currently talking with Dr. Uh, Phil McGraw. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. I mean, who the, fuck is, who the fuck is that Dr. Phil? Who is he to tell me what to do, what's right or wrong? This fat fuck, he don't tell me what to do. What makes him the expert on anything? You tell me. I want to throw up on Dr. Phil. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's a bit of a huckster like uh, a lot of people. But uh, let me tell you, Bo, I, 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 I have a lot more, but I, I kind of want to save it for the next time because I want to talk to you again. And, uh, you know, because, look, you're in show business. You have, you, you, I, hey, let me get this one in before before I let you go. Uh, what what happened yeah, with that show Vinyl, which I loved. I loved the pilot, Bobby Cannavale and, and, and Ray Romano and Dice Clay and, and you. Uh, what happened? How did that get canceled? You got Scorsese and Mick Jagger working together. What was it like, first of all, working with Scorsese? And- I'll, tell exactly, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Well, I've done a lot of movies, not just good shows. Oh, I, I know. The Wolf of Wall Street. I play fucking Bo Deedle. I play fucking Bo Deedle. I we know. got a new movie coming out, The Irishman, I I played with De Niro and Scorsese, uh, the director did. I played with De Niro and the other guy, Al Pacino. I know. I, aud- I, I, aud- I auditioned for Bo. I auditioned for that. I got Joey Glinto. I'm the fucking boss. I'm the one that introduces the whack job to Jimmy Hoffa, and he ends up killing Jimmy <laughs> Hoffa. But the point is, what happened to Vinyl? Vinyl was, they spent about $28 million for the pilot, right. and Scorsese directed it. We had some great scenes. We had, like, the Plato's Retreat. You had about 80 people banging each other, and uh, it was it was really great. But what happened is they got Lombardi at HBO. He was the number two guy under Richie Pluffer. What they do is they release the, they premiere it against that fucking Walking Dead with those fucking oh. zombie people. You can't premiere you got 15 million assholes that watch Walking Dead every Sunday. They're not going to watch vinyl, and they, they release it at the wrong time. And then they were going to go into the second season. And I told Marty, I want, you know, because they killed me at the end. Yeah. I killed fucking Dice, Dice Clay. Dice Clay. Yeah, yeah, very said. disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah and, then, and then I told Marty, I said, wait, when I was reading the script, I said, wait a second. They killed me? No, they don't fucking kill me. I want to come as his cousin, I said, I'll shave my beard off, I'll lose, I'll lose about 25 pounds, I'll put a fucking wig on, and I want to come back, I want to whack that fuck that last week. So I had that plan. We were going to come back in the second, we were going to come back on the second season, and then they canceled everything. So that was, right. I love this podcast because I love this. I love to curse. Me too. I love cursing. You're on the right. You're on the right show, Bo. I'm, I, I fucking. I've been cursing like this in second grade, and uh, and I do it on stage. And but but you know you got to You got to I want. Hey, Dick, I want you to come on my podcast. I think we're like number eight or some shit. Of course. Uh, I got a podcast called One Tough Podcast on iTunes. I uh, guess. Guess Fox Network or some shit like that. <laughs> but the point is that I had that kid. I had that kid. I just did another movie called Apalaika, and it's uh, Danny A did it. I just filmed up in uh, Newburgh, and then I had that guy. What the hell is his name? Uh, Danny, uh, Dan, not Danny. Yeah, but Danny A. Uh, Ar- Ar- Arquette. Arquette. What's his name? Arquette. What's the Arquette? David Arquette. What's the actor's name? Arquette. Da- David Arquette. Yeah, yeah, he was on my show. Yeah. Nice kid, very, very, very nice. Very quiet, quiet. I had to pull everything out of him. Very <laughs> quiet, very. Quiet. I love. Well, I'd love to do that. And let me ask you a favor before you go. You, you got you're going to dinner or something, right? I, 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 I want. Here's my fantasy, and it doesn't involve women. I want to have dinner at Rayo's with you. Well, there's no fucking body else. I've had that table since '77. I told Warren Buffett lick my balls. The last time he's been up there not five times. 
That fuck never picked up the check. No wonder he's worth eighty-five million billion. That prick. <laughs> but uh, definitely, you come up. We'll put together a real eclectic table. And the only one thing, I always sit with my face face to the door. Of course. Every scumbag got locked up. Of I'm starting to get out. The guy that raped the two guys that raped the nun, they're out. The guy that killed the ten fucking people, eight kids, Palm Sunday Master. That motherfucker's out. The guy that killed Herman Bell, he's out. I locked all these motherfuckers. They're out. Don't worry they about it. The, they may be running for me a bolt right now. I don't, know. don't don't worry about it. I, I you know I, I buy Rayo sauce. It's so good. I'll, I'll 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 take the bullet for you on that one. I'll sit with my back to the door. You'll you'll be protected. No no. What we do what we do is I always I face the door and I tell you already if I. You go like this, my hands go down. I flip the table as a fucking barricade, <laughs> and I shoot around. That's all. All right, Bo. Hey, I, this was as bad. This was as good, if not better, than I thought it was going to be. Uh, we love your service. Uh, keeping, you know, for years you kept us safe. Uh, fuck, and, I'm uh, not seriously. One thing, I, am, I am not. I hate to be called any kind of a hero. I never was a hero. You know who the heroes are? The heroes are our boys that don't come back. Who are cops that got killed? Them the heroes too. are our soldiers that don't come back. They're the real heroes. You know what I am? I'm just a lucky motherfucker. And I tell you what, I love cops. I love. So do I. I love soldiers. I love our military. And more important is, you'll love this bowler wrap. I like to fucking put that on Fat Al shop and, and tie that up. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the. Oh, that's right. He ain't fat in. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show this. Uh, when you hang up, I'm, we're gonna show a video of you sh- uh, using the bowler wrap. So I, I can't thank you enough for calling in, Bo. And uh, yeah, let's. Uh, let, I'll hit you up on Twitter. I think we'll, we'll do the. We'll do it again real soon, and I want you to come on my show, and I definitely, I'll obviously be up in rails real soon. All right, buddy. All right, thanks, Bo. Appreciate it. Bye. The great Bo Deedle, everybody, and. Uh... <laughs> That's a cop, okay? <laughs> I don't know if there'll be many people that agree with his, uh, as far as dating goes and how it's changed. And <laughs> But I kind of wish I lived back in the 60s and 70s. But they had those mammoth books. But uh, I got to talk to him about his agent, too. I mean, he gets these roles and, and uh, you know. But, um, it, you know, it's funny. I think the bio I pulled mentioned the bad lieutenant, too. I have to look at it on WikiLeaks. I'm not sure. But, but that didn't ring true to me when I read it, you know? Kaitel, do you ever see that one, guys? Oh. <laughs> Boy, you got, I'm jealous of how many flicks you get ahead of you that it's so much better than anything's come out in the last... I, I'm not just being... They made better fucking movies. As Bo Dito will tell you. Let's... Should we run that video since people are watching? This is the uh, what Bo Dito was talking about. Uh, it's a Batman-style bowler rap. And... Uh, it could revolutionize policing yeah. and sp- spell the end of uh, electroshocking tasers. But here's what he was talking about. It wraps a string around you. Watch how fast this happens. <laughs> I'm seriously worried that guys are going to be using that at bars. Hey, look at the broad over the end. <laughs> you know, um, look at that. I wanted to ask him if it's strong enough to stop somebody on angel dust. It was, ain't guys on Angels Death like the strength of 100 men. It's kind of crazy. But that that's unbelievable. I always thought there were better ways than, you know, whether it was rubber bullets. You know, you get hit with a rubber bullet. It killed a girl at a celebration after the Sox won the World Series, I think, in 2013. A girl got hit in the eye with a rubber bullet. It actually killed her. Uh, there's other ways, that, you know, but I'm, for the most part, other, other than actually killing somebody with a bullet. So, um, anyways, Bo Deedle, everybody. Uh, what the hell else? Maybe I should. We got this, uh, well, let's go to, let's go to Bobby first in Tennessee. He wants to talk about, uh, Kavanaugh. Bobby, what's going on? Go ahead. You didn't listen to me. You didn't let me make my point. Go ahead, Bobby. Um, you asked me who owns, who owns NBC. It's Noah Oppenheim, another Jewish guy. Nope. Andrew Lack, another <laughs> Jewish guy. I... He's the head um, of <laughs> Listen, listen. Yeah, go ahead. Chuck Schumer. You know, he likes to talk about, um, he's like a big social justice guy. He likes to care about, um, oh, don't take on the little guy. But then he's a hardcore Israeli first Zionist. Never talks anything about the um, All right. issue. Well, I mentioned NBC and I Chuck Schumer. Funny. Right after I hung up with you, I mentioned, uh, but I was, you know, 
kidding because there's a hundred of the politicians who aren't Jewish. Come on, you're dirty smart in this. You know who owns Oh, this. Bobby, Bobby come on. I'm smarter than this. Uh, sorry, I'm not buying into it. I make jokes about it all the time. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of other fucking people who aren't Jewish who are in on uh, taking Trump down. You know, uh, a lot of the global. And that's that other theory. I actually have a bit about it. If you're uh, somebody who leans right in their politics, like the guy who's called with three different names, um, and uh, you use the term globalist, the leftists say that's code for Jew. (laughs) That's what they say. And I say, yeah, I was trying to sell my car the other day. This guy was really globaling me down. And uh, Michael Savage, if you know, he's a conservative uh, talk show host out in San Francisco, by the way. A uh, real conservative. And he's actually been banned from flying to the U.K. They put him on like a terror list just because he's a right-wing conservative. Seriously. Uh, but some of his stuff he said in books and stuff. Uh, but he has an audio clip. There's a theory out there about uh, Christine Blasey Ford being tied in with the CIA because her family was there. The Stanford does a lot of work with the CIA, blah, blah, blah. Here's the uh, here's the audio clip of Michael Savage. It's a conspiracy theory. Again, uh, somebody called in. I think it was Michael Rossi yesterday, a, pa- a patron, uh, a patron on Patreon, and um, he mentioned Snopes, and 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 so Snopes is refuting a lot of this. I'll read that too, and let you guys decide. And um, you know, Snopes. I heard. Then you hear from people who think like me. Well, Snopes is all left wing, and ba ba ba. I can't, you, you can't be a publication out there and say, we're the final word in the truth. That's just not, that's not how the world works. But here's Michael Savage's uh, theory on Blasey Ford. Is Dr. Ford deeply tied to the CIA? Who is she? Her grandfather worked for the CIA. Her brother used to work for the firm that created Fusion GPS. Are you listening to this? Yes. She happens to head up the CIA undergraduate internship program at Stanford University. It- well, so was, was that it? Huh? No more? That's the whole thing. I think we have different cues or something. Well, when I send you something, for some reason, it's always a couple seconds different. I know there's more than that. Yeah, I'm going to pull the whole thing up. Not the whole thing. Pull up what I sent you. Anyways. It has Deep State written all of it. That's it? That was the end of it? Okay. Anyway, did I just hear my heartbeat? <laughs> Holy shit. Anyways, the whole thing, uh, they said uh, Stanford had an internship program that she ran as far as... Uh, um, teaching CIA operatives or whatever. And Snopes looks into it. They refute this. Stanford doesn't run undergraduate internship program, but rather promotes that internship, which is operated by the CIA in D.C. Christine Blasey Ford is a research psychologist at Stanford, not a CIA internship program administrator. None of these... Po- by the way, Mr. Savage is Jewish, I believe. I might be wrong. Sounds like... Um, so this will blow Bobby from Tennessee's theory out of the water. Um, uh, not a CIA internship program administrator. None of the posts claiming she directs, leads, or is in charge of the internship program provided any evidence of that effect. And none of them explained or acknowledged that the internship is an external one run by the CIA itself, thousands of miles away from Stanford's campus. So that's the first part they uh, refute. The second part, Christine Blasey's uh, brother, Ralph, used to work for the international law firm of uh, Baker Hostetler, the firm created Fusion GPS, the company who wrote the Russian dossier. They later admitted it was only a collection of field interviews. Baker Hostetler is located in the same building where the CIA operates three companies called Redcoats, Inc., Admiral Security Services, and Data Watch. They are operated by Ralph Blasey II. He is the father of Christine and Ralph III. This component of the overall theory is riddled with factual fabrications and logical failures. According to his LinkedIn profile, Ralph Blasey III, that's Christine's brother and the son of Ralph Blasey Jr., 
did indeed once work as a litigation partner for Baker Hostetler and the firm's Washington, D.C. office. That part's true. But Baker Hostetler did not create Fusion GPS, as the blog post claims. Rather, in 2017, Fusion GPS told the Washington Post that they had performed some work as a subcontractor for Baker Hostetler, which is still a little too close for comfort, who were, who were representing a Russian holding company in a money laundering case brought by the U.S. Justice Department. However, Fusion GPS told the Post that their work for Baker Hostetler began in 2013, while Ralph Blasey III stopped working for the law firm in 2004, nine years before they engaged Fusion GPS. Baker Hostetler's Washington, D.C. address is 1050 Connecticut Avenue Northwest. None of these three companies listed in the conspiracy theory as CIA fronts run by Ralph Blasey Jr. has offices at that address. Admiral Security Services is a division of Redcoats, and Data Watch Systems is owned and operated by the same people but located at a different address within walking distance. Uh, so, you know. Ralph Blasey Jr. works for only one of these three companies, none of which share an address with Baker Hostetler or has been shown by any evidence whatsoever to be operated by the CIA. Uh, the claim here is that Blasey Ford's grandfather, this is where it gets interesting, was the legendary CIA-linked currency trader Nicholas Nick Deke. Without offering any evidence of a uh, familial relationship, the Brass Balls blog stated that Christine and Ralph III's grandfather was Nicholas Deke. Former CIA director William Casey acknowledged Deke's decades of service to the CIA. Deke has been the subject of speculation and fascination for decades. In 1964, Time magazine called him the James Bond of the world of money writing. In 1985, Deke was shot dead at his office in Lower Manhattan by Lois Lang, a homeless woman with a history of mental illness. That sm smells fishy. Theories have been put forth that Lang was not merely motivated by her own delusions, as investigators concluded, but was acting under the direction of nefarious and organized forces, uh, criminal or governmental. Whatever the truth about the death of Nicholas Deke, one thing is clear. He was not Christine Blasey Ford's grandfather. Multiple news articles before and after his death stipulated they had only one child, a son named Robert Leslie, also known as Les. This information obviously rules out the possibility that Deke was Blasey Ford's maternal grandfather. And since we know her father is Ralph Blasey Jr., we can say with certainty that Deke was not her paternal grandfather either. So, I don't know. You guys make up your mind. Do you believe, is Snopes the final word in, in this? And, and a lot, there seems to be a lot of contradiction there. But there's a lot, the fact that her family was involved in the CIA and Stanford and, and, and uh, you know, I'm not going to go connect a thousand dots in a one-hour show but uh you guys decide michael savage put it out there and i'm sure he's probably following up on it and um so snope says well this is all kinds of holes in that theory but uh it is kind of creepy and uh maybe the fbi will look into that maybe they already have i don't know i'm sure it's the jews so michael savage is jewish yes his his real name is michael allen weiner he was born in the Bronx to Jewish Russian immigrants. He's brilliant, you know. He's like a biochemist. He's got like a degree that only a few people have, you know. And uh, he, he's a really smart dude. But, uh, I mean, you have to be to stay on the radio that long in San Francisco as a, a, a conservative host. Uh, but that doesn't mean what he's saying here. You know, I, I'm sure some of it isn't true. But uh, with people like Snopes around, you know, I don't know what the fuck to believe. How about this? Uh, oh, this is uh, Rockford Man. That's Rockford, Illinois, I'm guessing, right? Is it? Yeah. Uh, Rockford Man arrested in connection with vandalism at Republican uh, headquarters. We have a picture of him, guys. Watch out because I'm. He's got a giant spider on his head. Why are you putting Bo Deedle up? Ryan. Just click. Guys, I'm sure, Bo Dita wants his face up next to this guy. Uh, the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office announces charges for vandalism of the Winnebago uh, County Republican Party headquarters. Police say the building was vandalized with words like rape and shame sometime between late Saturday night and early Sunday morning. Timothy Dam, 42, of put his, yes, yeah, keep him up there. He looks like one of Gronk's cousins. Timothy Dam, 42, of Rockford, faces a felony charge of uh, 
criminal defacement of property, which is punishable by one to three years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. He also charged for resisting a police officer. Look at him. He's fucking uh, crazy. You're crazy! I'm not crazy. I just don't give a fuck. Uh, Dam is being held in the Winnebago County Jail. He's considered innocent until proven guilty, unlike Kavanaugh, which he's so pissed about. The community believes the recent hearing involving uh, Brett Kavanaugh played a role and has had impact in our community. The words rape and shame were written numerous times across the building. Several people agreed that it was not right to vandalize the building, but some felt this was someone's way of voicing their opinion. And this is why we're doomed to fail as a species, okay? I can see you maybe thinking um, you could go, if you're a lefty, you could go, how do we know a right winger didn't do this to make it look like that? as the left does, you know, how they hang nooses on doorknobs and, and, and shit like that, and then they blame it on the right. So I can understand maybe having some skepticism that way. But, uh, but either way, defending what whoever did this for whatever reason. Um, uh, yeah, several people agreed it was not right to vandalize it, but, but some felt this was someone's way of voicing their opinion. Um, WCRCC Chairman Jim Thompson held a news conference to confront this act of hate quote unquote, is it any wonder that after months of attack ads, this state and the move toward guilty until proven innocent and the U.S. Senate that this type of violence has found its way to Rockford? I say he's uh, right on the money with that crack. Wouldn't you say so? Um, Some were upset about the graffiti. Others felt this was someone's way of having a voice in their community. Uh, that's why they, this is what the person says they interviewed, uh, oh, Natasha Harris. That's why they wrote it in big, bold letters, because no matter whom you are or what political party you hold or, or position you hold, rape is never okay. Wow. How'd I go out on a fucking limb, huh? Uh Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert. I don't believe anyone should be select, should be elected. That's a rapist because I mean, and again, this is somebody who votes Democrat. Okay. I don't believe another informed Democrat voter. I don't believe anyone should be elected that's a rapist because, I mean, what does that say about our people? What does that say about our country? Uh, we like pussy. What do you think it says? She, she's already got Kavanaugh convicted as a rapist and just a fucking... Uh-oh, retard alert. Retard alert. You know what she should do? Thank you. Can you imagine... I love when people get interviewed on news and you just listen to the con. She doesn't. Re- Go ahead. I'm, I'm really upset of her egregious misuse of whom. Of whom. Yes. She, that was that another was thing. Entirely wrong. Yeah. She's way out of line on that. Um, but what's it say about a country that was, she's already got the guy. She doesn't even just. She's crazier than the guy that actually sprayed painted. They arrested. She's 14 times crazier than that guy. Anyways, remember, uh, tomorrow I go to Dallas, so no show um, for the Patreon members, but we're going to throw something up there that'll tantalize you. Maybe I'm going too far the description. Maybe, I don't know, can we throw an old Leave it a Beaver up there without getting flagged? No. This was uh, uh, interesting. And by the way, the, the conclusion of that last story, more left-wing violence, Mitch McConnell was chased down in a, in a, a D.C. airport being harassed. He's got polio, by the way. There's a guy, girl right up his ass, going up the escalator screaming at him and shit. You're fucking vile people. I'm not seeing another. And by the way, I, I forgot to brought this up. I saw Lindsey Graham on, who actually pointed out that he voted for Mayor, Sotomayor, and, and Kagan. You know what I mean? He was pointing out the difference between... And uh, the left is... It's all about fucking power. I don't care if I sound biased or not. You can't... You, you, you're just... I don't know. You've taken the party way the fire. I, I don't know how it's not going to backfire, but it will. Finally tonight on Meet the Press. Imagine, I think she would get Bo Deedle as a, me, me, me and Bo Deedle should do a show together. Can you imagine? I'd watch. But we'd do the show, but I'd, I'd insist they bleep us every time we curse. It would just be hilarious. It would sound like one of those emergency broadcast things when there's a fucking hurricane. Beep. This was interesting today. Uh, I thought this was, well, maybe you won't find it, but uh, I will. Uh, a former a former sailor is behind the plot to send envelopes with suspicious substances, at least two of which tested positive for the poison ricin, 
to the Pentagon, the White House, and to Ted Cruz's office, okay? A former fucking sailor. Son of a whore! One of two envelopes uh, addressed to either Defense Secretary Mattis or Chief of Naval Operations Admiral John Richards and contained a return address <laughs> that linked them to the former sailor whose name has not been disclosed. Why would you put a, a, a return address? Even if you made it up. Even if the one in a trillion chance that the street that you made up somehow would give the... What? Help. Maybe I don't know enough about mail. I don't... They got one uh, mail from Mexico, with, but it, it was rice and beans. That's right, folks. There was rice and... and... <laughs> Anyways. Lady, hello? Another envelope was addressed to President Trump at uh, the White House. A tip from the White House led, led officials at the Pentagon to discover the packages. They were delivered Monday at an off-site mailing facility at the sprawling defense complex. Both packages initially tested positive for ricin, but are undergoing further tests. One of them might have the flu, and the other one might have jaundice. Uh, what more do you need to know? It's fucking ricin. Uh, the U.S. Secret Service revealed late Tuesday it had received a suspicious envelope addressed to the president the day before. The agency said the envelope was not received at the White House, nor did it ever enter the White House. A lot of people say that about Trump. What? Get a good dip! Word of the incidents in the Washington area came, as officials said, two people were rushed to the hospital after being exposed to a white powdery substance. You know how many people are exposed to white powdery substances every night in D.C.? Uh, and mail sent to Cruz's campaign office in Houston. The Houston Fire Department said the powder tested negative for hazardous substances. Turned out it came off the balls of Ted Cruz after he came out of the gym. What? It was Desinex? Is it? Uh, the two people who were taken to the hospital don't work for the Cruz campaign. Well, who they work for? What are they doing in the building? <laughs> what are they doing in his office? Ricin is part of, uh, you know what ricin is, folks? It's part of waste mash produced when castor oil is made. Castor oil is what like, parents used to punish kids with back in the day. Yeah, take a tablespoon of castor oil. No wonder why it tasted horrible. It had fucking rice in it. <laughs> if it is made into a partially purified material or refined rice, it can be used as a weapon capable of causing death. A former sailor. What did, what his beef? Now, there's a picture that comes with this story, and it says, uh, okay, it's guys in hazmat suit taking the mail away. And, uh, all right, I thought they saying that was a suspect. That was, uh, finally tonight. This one's right up uh, Ryan's alley. I believe he's, he, were you in theater, Ryan? And... Yes, I was in Bye Bye Birdie in high school. <laughs> I played the nerd who didn't get a de pre uh, palm date. <laughs> he's a fag. <laughs> Kent State University. By the way, I think Edelman was the quarterback at Kent State for the Patriots, the now the receiver who's coming back. Uh, has Kent State University has canceled its fall musical production of West Side Story following complaints that too many white students landed lead roles. Wake up, white people. No, West Side Story, you guys know the play. You may not know it, but it's, you know, it's it's a Hispanic gangs. It was back in the whatever, the Puerto Rican gangs, and Maria was the fucking girl that uh, whatever. You, you know, I, I I hate musicals. I fucking hate them. They may, and, and you know what made me hate them? West Side Story. I saw, I, 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 I just a fucking gang. Well, show the video of the original. This is when I went, well, this makes no sense. Look at this gang of toughs. That's exactly how I play ball. Yeah, exactly. That is considered that was considered a gang. They were all white in the original. But nobody beefed back then. I'm almost with the lefties on this one. But first of all, the, the whole idea of a musical makes no fucking sense, especially in this case. When you, it's supposed to be uh, rival gangs, the Sharks and the Jets, 
and they fuck they dance when they get mad they fucking it's like a fucking freshman mixer these fucking white pussies <laughs> show that again please I, I can't believe <laughs> All right, that's good. Try doing that to MS-13 gang, uh, members. A bunch of white guys. I'm going, boo! So I can find you know, 1,100 pieces on the LIE. But maybe the school is right. If I'm the school, I go, what are you talking about? The whole cast was white in the original. But it's about it, 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 somebody, Jason, uh, whoever. It, 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 am I right? It's about Puerto Rican gangs or whatever, right? Something like that. They're not white. That's all I know. One of them's a white gang. One of them's a Puerto Rican gang. I'm yes. pretty sure. If a sharks were white, the yeah. Jets were Puerto Rican. And, and it looked like they used, I watched them, they looked like they used the Italians as the Puerto Rican. There's all kinds of beefs in here, folks. I, uh, Bridget Martinez, uh, a junior musical theater major who's of Puerto Rican descent, tried out for her dream role of Maria. And she was beaten out by a guy named Ryan... Pidahoa? What's your last name, Ryan? Piajota. Piajota. But she said it all just got screwed up when it was given to a, a white female. But here's my other here's my other take on this. What if they did cast all the brown people as the gang? Then somebody was saying, "What are you trying to say about fucking brown people? That they're all gang bangers? You can't win in this fucked up world, uh, this country, as far as race goes." Um, Martinez was instead cast as the white girl's understudy. That is so racist. The outrage to the casting led to a September school-wide town hall meeting in which uh, Eric Van Bars, Kent State School of Theater and Dance Director. Well, your son looks like a fag to me. You better get married again because he's going to wind up with somebody's cock in his mouth. Oh, come on. Uh, Eric Van Bars, Kent State School of Theater and Dance Director, decided to cancel the show as a substitute for recasting and replaced it with a production of Children of Eden, which will be all Asian kids and one Puerto Rican guy with a uh, uh, wooden leg. Oh, God, help us. I do like one girl spoke up, Skylar Die. I think she was saying... One student told campus from the theater program is bowing to racists. Scott Skylar Dye, a theater performance minor, blasted the decision to cancel the performance because, and, and this quote unquote, this is her, those people can't see anything but skin color. I'm guessing she's white and she's talking about the people whining and said the decision says more than enough about the university and its dedication to quality. Good for you, Skylar. Do I have that right? Is that the way you guys read it? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Some girl stuck up and said, yeah, those people. I'm sure she's popular. Anyway. <laughs> Yay for Skylar. Anyways, uh, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I will uh, not see you till Monday. As I said, I'm off to Dallas early tomorrow morning. Going to pay the, one of the twinks to give me a ride to the airport. Um... And they're going to blow all that. You know, I'll give Jason an extra or whatever. It'll go right up his nose right after the show. I got a problem. He does. He's got a big problem. <laughs> he's, hick, he's hooked on antihistamines. Um, that is it. Uh, thank you, Bo Deedle. And uh, I'm going to hit him up. I, I definitely have to go on his podcast. The guy outcursed me. Oh, my God. Imagine him when he was in his 20s and 30s and banging broads on the fire escape and shit. Must have been quite a time. Uh, that is it. Uh, I can't think. Do, do, am I forgetting anything? We got one last super chat. It's kind of related Go vaguely ahead. to the last story. If, but, this, uh, if this ends it alone, though, Jason, I'm going to kill you. All right. I, I, uh, so, okay. Go Mr. Nicktown writes, yeah. if Caitlyn Jenner died and came back as a ghost that was brutally honest, would she be uh, brutally honest to her kids? Would she be a transparent, transparent, transparent? Dude, you, you, that might have been the worst decision you've made since I met you. I tried. Yeah, don't. We also didn't cover the stilettos. Yeah, I know that. I don't want to disappoint you tremendously, Ryan. Jesus Christ. Put the picture of the stilettos. Guys are wearing stilettos now. I have one picture, and this is how they should look as far as I'm concerned. Any guy wearing stilettos, that's how it should 
All right, that's it. I'll see you guys on Monday. Remember, you think it, I'll say it. You're welcome. And again, thanks for all your support. Take care, bitches.